So I'm going to introduce Ashley Gora, who's going to be your, your MC. Ashley is a, enrolled in the International Environmental Policy, a double major with Global Impact Management. So it's sort of an MBA with, a, with an international global impact environmental touch. She is from Woodstock, Illinois. Spent a lot of time in Hispanic culture as a fluent Spanish speaker. Has spent a lot of time in Costa Rica and has spent two years with the Lyceum doing a fantastic job of organizing things. So uh, I will hand it off to you, Ashley, and you may MC the press conference. Thanks, Ashley. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming to our closing ceremony. This is the committee briefing. Um, as you can see right now, we currently have General Assembly and ECOSOC representatives who have been chosen by their peers because of their outstanding representation and because of the knowledge that they displayed. So for those reasons or other reasons within their committees, they have had been selected to be in front of you today and share a little bit about their experiences. Presently, we will be selecting the Security Council representatives, and I'm going to do so uh, rather arbitrarily. This was supposed to also be selected based on their... Actually, we'll do this live in front of you right now. Um, Ella, who do you want to go up there? Um, uh, China. China? China. Well, this is on Security Council. Actually, just start chatting out. China. Russia. Japan. China. China and Japan. Uh, send one person up to Security Council. As Tom introduced me, my name is Ashley. I'm a student here in MIS, um, the Middlebury Institute of International Studies. And as he also said, I'm an MBA with a specialization in international environmental policy. I specifically focus on issues of biodiversity and forest conservation more than anything, and on business solutions about how to accomplish these ends. So that's the goal. The problem is difficult, but hopefully I find a job in that realm, <laughs> which can be a little bit difficult to do. Um, in any case, I wanted to take a minute to recognize each and every one of you, not just those of you who are in front of us today about to speak on, on your committee's behalf, but each and every one of you who is sitting in the audience in front of me right now. I knew your names before I got to meet you today. I've been working on this program now for two years, um, and I've gotten to know you just through an electronic screen and selecting who's going to be in what committee and what country. and those difficult choices based on the things that you guys wanted to do. It impresses me continuously every year, the amount of passion that you guys have for this program and for international cooperation, learning about the world, geography and world issues and news and, man, how can we get along in this world that's so big and scary and people that speak other languages and have different ideals and values. I applaud you for the effort that you have made to be here today. And as you all know, the purposes of the United Nations are to maintain international peace and security, develop friendly relations among nations that don't always speak the same language, pursue universal peace, achieve international cooperation, and be a center for harmonizing nations' actions in order to achieve these goals. Each of you is a distinguished representative of a nation with a specific history, geography, culture, and perspective. <coughs> The importance of gathering together as a community of nations in pursuit of solutions is, should not be overlooked. The work is never over, as you guys may have discovered today. But this is a big step in the right direction. So I would like to take a moment and give you all a big round of applause for the work that you did today. We have three committees represented today, the General Assembly to the far left, Security Council in the middle, and Economic and Social Council on the far right side. 
the Economic and Social Council, the, there's a specific group within that that was discussed in today's committee, and that is the Commission on the Status of Women. So, the General Assembly discussed how to prevent an arms race in outer space. The Security Council discussed the situation in North Korea and what the nations have to deal with now as North Korea takes certain actions that may or may not uh, be to the benefit of these countries or detriment of these countries. And finally, the Economic and Social Council's Commission on the Status of Women discussed the issue of women, rural women specifically, in all nations and how they can be used to alleviate poverty if they are empowered to do so. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about these topics, and I'll least ask each one of them to elaborate more on what they discussed and how they achieved those resolutions. But I want to first introduce each of the representatives by name and what school they're from before I start addressing them as their country name, as is what we do in Mali United Nations. So first, over in the General Assembly, I would like to introduce to you Zach Bridges and Delaney Horner, both from Ocean Grove Charter School. Next, we have Josie Erdl and Lisette Mendez. Josie is from Monterey Bay Charter School. Lisette is from Bayview Academy. And finally, we have Kate Judy from Monterey Bay Charter School and Colette Giselle. Giselle? Uh, Giselle. Giselle, thank you. Colette Giselle from Bayview Academy. committee briefing, I wanted to quickly explain how this will work. I will be asking some questions to each committee's representatives, and one or both of you may answer the question. Sometimes I might ask a question for all of the committees to answer, that's a little bit more general, but in that case I will repeat the question from one committee to the next, so that um, you all have a chance to hear the question asked to you, okay? Representatives, please speak directly into the microphone. At this time, you may check and see that your microphone is turned on. You can take it out of the mic holder. You don't have to pass the whole thing around. All right, after I ask my initial questions to the representatives, I would be overjoyed to take questions from the audience, in which case, you may start thinking about the questions that you have about these topics or the students' experiences starting now. I will bring the microphone to you as long as you raise your hand. So, the first question I have today is about, it's for the General Assembly. I'm going to start over on this side. Um, and it has to do with your topic. Uh, so, Delaney, uh, excuse me, China, France, what really is the probability of there being an arms race in outer space? There is a huge um, possibility, and it's a very relevant topic. Um, because um, many countries are putting satellites in, in space and um, destroying um, satellites in space could cause something called the Kessler Syndrome, which could cause a chain reaction um, of the destruction of satellites. So it's very, very possible. Um, yeah, kind of what Delaney said, um, it's very... Um, especially now, because um, as I talked about in the conference, there is an outer space treaty about using um, weapons of mass destruction in space, but there is not a treaty on the use of conventional weapons or things that are dropped from um, space into our atmosphere. And so, yeah, it is a very real um, possibility. What kind of time frame are we looking at? Is this something that could happen like within the next five years, next ten years? Like how, how soon do we need to worry about this? Um, now, kind of, because um, a, lot of, um, a lot of country satellites already have the capability of holding a um, type of weapon like a bomb or a, um, just anything that could enter the Earth's atmosphere. So this um, is a uh, problem now. And so maybe, yeah, it could be in the future, but it definitely is a possibility for it to uh, happen today. 
And then just one more question before I move on. Each of you, you're China and France. Um, what were the specific concerns that your countries had with regards to this issue of, ha of there being an arms race in outer space? My country um, felt very strongly about transparency and um, international cooperation mm -hmm. as a way to prevent the outer space, our, um, arms race in outer space. Um, China um, feels this, um, the same the same way, and they um, they wanted to add to the 1967 treaty and make it um, so that all conventional weapons and anything that could be dropped into Earth's atmosphere would be banned. So yeah. Thank you. I'm going to move on, and I'll likely come back to you. Thank you. Security Council. Hi. China, Japan. What's going on? presently with North Korea, and why should we care? North, North Korea has, over the past 50 or so years, built up a nuclear capabilities, and recently tested a ballistic missile with nuclear power that some say was strong enough to reach the U.S. And if that was possible, they would join the only two countries now being China and Russia who can nuke the U.S. And that is scary because North Korea is a unchecked power in a way. They are run by someone who doesn't have a lot of checks and balances. It's not a well-run democracy. Just like the delegate from China said um, they now have ability to nuke certain parts of the world as well as the U.S. saying that it can reach there and this has become a problem because as she said their leader isn't very checked or balanced since he has come in power. Thank you. Um, I did, I did want to mention one thing actually while we're on the subject of North Korea. Where is Alex Redondo? Yo, good job. So Alex was in the General Assembly. I'm going to embarrass him right now, but he was in the General Assembly, and the Security Council only has 15 members, five of which are permanent and 10 of which are rotating. North Korea is not one of them right now. So the topic of North Korea is being discussed currently, but North Korea is not present. That doesn't mean that North Korea cannot participate in these discussions, but North Korea must be called into the session. The Security Council decided to be kind and call North Korea to the session, to the discussion, um, to be able to express views on the subject. And so I just wanted to congratulate him, as well as South Korea, as well. <laughs> also called him to the session for doing such a great job with that. Um, how does North Korea feel about these comments? Can I pick on you? So North Korea only wants to uh, attack United States because they don't like Donald Trump, and they will <laughs> and they will not harm any countries. But and they have been testing nuclear missiles, which would could cause some damage. And also. Uh, if North Korea bombs the United States, the radiation from the nuclear missiles could add and harm other countries and start wars. Also, North Korea wants to stop wars by attacking. Thank you, North Korea. Very cheery subject. So, understanding that North Korea does not necessarily want to cooperate and does not necessarily want to disarm itself, what challenges did this present when you guys needed to come to a resolution, China, Japan? Uh, one of the challenges we faced were that their, uh, China and Russia were there and they were considered allies of North Korea and not all other countries were necessarily considered allies. So we took a pretty long time trying to figure out a way to make sure that we took all countries into consideration and not just the ones being directly affected by it. So, for example, China has trade with North Korea. We didn't want to stop that completely since 
China is one of the big five, and they had to vote on this resolution, so we spent a lot of time trying to figure out a way to have everyone's opinion. One of the other things that was really hard was we had to think about what would make North Korea want to stay in this resolution and agree with what the UN is doing. In the past, they have not agreed or just not even listened. So we had to think about, yeah, one of the things was, well, China can't really stop trade with North Korea because they supply 63% of their food and resources, and that would then become a humanitarian issue. And um, you can't just take away their nuclear power because they feel insecure, and then they might try to invade or blow up some other country while they still have nuclear power. So you had to think about incorporating a country that wasn't actually there to have a say or you didn't really know what their motives could be. Thank you. I'll move on to, this is the Economic and Social Council. I know there's some Guys, yeah, Pakistan, Brazil. So you guys discussed the issue of women's empowerment as a tool to alleviate poverty. But we've been several decades now discussing like women's equality and women's empowerment. Why, why have we not solved this issue yet as a, as a world community? Um, so it's really hard, especially where a lot of this is happening, to change that because uh, women women's equality and uh, women being educated and um, and hunger is all, um, women are part of a strict culture, so it's hard to change religion and culture even over the span of 10 years. In this part of the world, women don't experience as much sexism as they do in rural countries, and I think the reason that we haven't solved this problem could be attributed to the the um, religious extremism in those countries and the inability for us to access the places where we need to make changes. What do you mean by access? So the places where women experience a lot of sexism are very rural and it's hard for people, it's hard for like police to stay there and people don't make enough money and food for a, like a democracy to be sustained. So. What solutions did you come up with in today's session to be able to achieve that? Um, so, we decided that um, an international fund should be made <coughs> um, uh, using a percentage. So, maybe, for example, like 10% based on the population, the amount of poverty. So. Some of the uh, wealthier countries could loan some of the less wealthy countries some money through an organization. And then um, once a year, you could check to make sure that that money is going to the right places and that those countries that they loaned it to aren't just using it for um, like just anything, that they're actually using it for um, hunger eradication. So um, our fund was set up to um, to fund uh, education and healthcare in developing countries in addition to access to resources for women to uh, own land and start their own businesses and farms and all that. Thank you. I'm gonna, oh, I do wanna ask the audience if at this point you have any questions, please raise your hand. Thank you. Just say your name first and last, and then your question. Uh, I'm Hayden Black, and I'm curious. Uh, my question is for the uh, for the Security Council. How is your country currently trying to solve the situation in North Korea? So Japan is currently trying to not necessarily solve, but be able to um, protect its own citizens since most of the missiles and other weaponry is landing off the coast of Japan. 
and they've started trying to evacuate all of its citizens. They're trying to ask the UN to gain um, the weapons necessary to protect its own country, and they're not necessarily trying to stop it. They're just trying to protect their citizens. China has lowered trade of some things into North Korea as well as stop their flights into North Korea so Chinese citizens can no longer go in there. They're also having talks with North Korea discussing the denuclearization of the peninsula. Thank you. Um, I have another question for the General Assembly uh, representatives for China and France. Um, I already asked the Economic and Social Council to explain what resolution they ended up coming to. Did you come to a resolution in your committee? Um, yeah, we did come to a resolution, but a, um, it was basically just stating that all countries um, would not be able to use conventional weapons in space as well as um, anything that could enter Earth's atmosphere and um, cause destruction, as well as um, creating, or no, just stating that no countries could shoot down any space objects such as satellites and um, other things like that. It also urges, urged um, countries to participate in international cooperation to work together to combat um, preventing a to prevent an arms race in outer space. And I have two follow-up questions about that. Was it easy to come to a resolution? And do you think that countries are going to follow this resolution? Well, it really wasn't easy because actually China <laughs> was um, working against us and we had to and we had to work together to update it and to work together to um, do everyone's needs. So, as Delano said, um, China was uh, voted against the resolution because it, we, um, uh, China felt that the resolution wasn't ready. It didn't have enough, um, um, I guess, descriptions of like what the definition is of a space weapon or things like that. And we felt that it just wasn't ready to be voted on and it needed uh, changes and edits to make it um, loophole proof, I guess. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Other questions from the audience? First name, last name, country in this case. And your question. Um, Lillian Ramanesh, country? Yeah. Uruguay? You talked about your own country's personal ideas about this topic. Could you elaborate a little on the resolution of Security Council? <laughs> the Security Council resolution had a couple different things. The first thing was that there would be no immediate military action taken in North Korea and that we were not going to actually try to take away the nuclear weapons that North Korea already has. We, as a whole, decided that that would make North Korea feel scared and that the world could attack them because there are many other countries that have nuclear weapons. We simply told North Korea to stop the testing of their nuclear weapons. One of the things that we put in place was a committee of ambassadors from multiple countries in the UN, excluding France, that would meet and decide uh, strictly based on the nuclear problem and North Korea, what should be done depending on the time and what has been done. Also, China is by resolution would put generals in North Korea to oversee the program and make sure that they are not testing or using their nuclear power for anything 
that they were not allowed to use it for. Part of our resolution was to have uh, Chinese generals, since China is one of North Korea's biggest allies, uh, have Chinese generals go there and kind of make sure that they're up with this resolution for that the committee that we were going to make. And uh, that didn't work. We were going to start decreasing and limiting the resources to make specifically nuclear weapons uh, from China if uh, North Korea wasn't going to cooperate. Okay. Other questions from the audience? First name, last name. My name is Jim Smith. I served as um, chair for the Security Council. This question is for everyone, though. Tell me, each of you, what was your favorite thing about today? Um, I really enjoyed working with the other countries to um, kind of establish common ground. Um. <laughs> My favorite part was getting everybody mad and voting against the resolution. <laughs> because for part of the time, I was helping write the resolution and I was a sponsor. And then when it came to voting time, I voted against it. So <laughs> I like that. What was your favorite part? I really just enjoyed the whole day. I thought it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed getting to learn and then speak about a different country. Um, I enjoyed the whole day as well, but specifically I really enjoyed how we were in a room together and we didn't exactly have the same points of views from our countries, but we were able to find common ground after kind of like seeing other points of views, we were able to find common ground to try to stop the problem. Um, I liked getting into little arguments. That was fun. Um, I liked, uh, well, when we were coming up with the resolution, there was only one country that was opposed to the resolution, which was Russia. And um, I liked it when we finally convinced Russia to um, get, on, get on board. Actually, so, so on that subject, what did it take for Russia to get on board in this case for your resolution? <laughs> what did it require of you? Um, well, that person liked our resolution, but they thought that Russia as a country wouldn't like it. So um, a bunch of people in our group had to come up with reasons that Russia, the country, would actually in real life join the resolution. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> well, since the resolution was an international fund, the representative from Russia didn't think that Russia would approve of that. And so um, some of it was that we already had what, uh, the UK on our side, and um, all of us, since Russia was the only opposing um, representative, we they didn't want to lose any of their allies that were on that committee. Sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> um, I actually have another question for all of you that is kind of in the same vein as, as James' question, Jimmy. And that is why, uh, now, after the fact, why would you suggest to a student that they do model UN? Like, what did you guys get out of this? Starting with, <laughs> um, I would recommend it because it helps with per, um, public speaking as well as being able to debate with people um, them, like what's the word? like adequately without like getting like overheated and mad about it and yeah. I agree with what China said about um for. It really helped me with my public speaking, and I really um, enjoyed debating with the other countries. Public speaking is definitely a big part of it, and also getting to kind of put on a different persona and 
throw all of your previous beliefs to the wind and just you have to stick with whatever that country thinks even if it's not what you as a person thinks is kind of a fun challenge. Um, since this was my first year, I think it just helped me learn how this takes place and how the actual UN kind of finds uh, resolutions for these types of problems and it also just really helped trying to, as China said, um, take on a different character, something that you might not absolutely agree with, but in order for the best resolution to come out, you have to play that role. Would you do this again next year? Yes. <laughs> recommend this program or why, why should somebody do Model UN? Um, I know before I did Model UN, I didn't know anything about the UN. Now I know a little, so that's always a good thing. And also, the whole public speaking thing, I used to get really nervous talking in front of my class, and I'm talking in front of everyone in this room, and I'm not super nervous, so. <laughs> about um, <clears throat> uh, taking on a new persona. And also, uh, it was really fun having to work around each other, each country's beliefs, and um, having to make a res resolution that would include everyone. We have time for one or two more audience questions. Let me come back here to Australia. Jonah Cortman, uh, and I'm the representative from Australia, and I have a question for the Brazilian representative from Ecosos. How will the developing countries pay back their funds if they are already don't have a lot of money? Um, so, since it was would be through an organization, um, uh, the Countries that needed the help with the poverty and hunger, in our resolution, we wrote that um, one of the reasons that Russia agreed to it was that um, since Russia is a fairly wealthy country, if they loan some of the other countries some money, then if uh, some of the uh, wealthier countries that loan money needed a favor or something, they would um, uh, have the other countries as allies, and also if that country got to uh, build enough uh, uh, off of poverty and hunger, then they could uh, pay them back eventually. You name? Isabella Rakiro, I'm the delegate from Ukraine on the Security Council, and I would like to ask the Security Council, especially China, about during the meeting in China, you were saying that you supported North Korea. I would like to know what China's thoughts are if North Korea decided and or threatening um, China with a nuclear attack. That would be kind of silly if North Korea um, were to blow up China with a nuclear weapon, that would go their food and their livelihood. So, my message as China to North Korea would be, if you have a death wish, then by all means blow us up. Can I ask North Korea how that makes you feel? <laughs> Green Shields uh, for the Japan and Security Council, along with Lizette. Um, just for some clarification, before you said that everyone in the treaty agreed, um, except for France, can you clarify why France didn't? So, um, for the treaty, we excluded France because it, during the meeting, France said that they did not specifically see 
North Korea as a, its own country, so they were asked to be excluded from that, and they said to do that based on their beliefs that North Korea isn't a country. France does not recognize North Korea as a country. Cool. Okay, last question for real. There's any more burning questions? Oh, all the way in the back. My name is Maya Brett Nurse, um, and my question is for um, all of the um, groups. Um, um, for the entire Model UN process, what was your favorite part, and why would you decide to do this again? Uh, let's start with the General Assembly. Uh, your favorite part, and why you would decide to do Model UN again? My favorite part were the unmoderated caucuses, so I could work um, as other countries informally. And I think I would do this again to try to take on another country's position and um, not just do my own my own personal position, but take on other countries. Um, my favorite part was when we um, we had finished a resolution. And <laughs> <laughs> And we decided to do pick another topic, and it was if China and France went at war. And so that was a very fun topic. And yeah, so that was my favorite part. Your favorite part? And Security Council, and why you would do this again? My favorite part was getting to learn about a country and then speak with other people who knew so much about their countries, and I would do this again because it's just really fun. My favorite part throughout the day was definitely, like at least uh, said in the General Assembly, was the unmoderated caucuses because it was, it felt like we just got a lot more done because we got to speak out of turn and we just got to throw ideas at people. Like, what do you, what would you do if this? And we got a lot done during those and we just kept asking for them and just 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And I would definitely do this again because it's just so fun trying to, trying to take on a different character and meeting all these new people. Um, my favorite part was meeting with everyone who does model UN at my school every week because I learned a lot from the meetings and yeah, that was just really fun. Yeah, um, like Pakistan said, um, I really liked uh, debating actually in school um, with the UN group, that was really fun, um, but I also liked debating um, today and I would do this again um, to maybe do a different council, like Security Council or General Assembly, and take on a different um, country to um, just challenge myself. Well, with that last question, we conclude our committee briefing. So let's give a round of applause. like North Korea possibly bombing other people can be can take a really long time let's just put it that way um, and may not always result in something that is achievable in one day but despite that the fact that people meet together in a room and talk about it is a good first step so thank you for teaching me that <laughs> finally I wanted to to recognize the committee chairs for the fact that they volunteered their time all day today, as well as prior to today in training in order to be here with you guys and spend time with you um, and just be able to help this happen. So let's give a round of applause for your committee chairs.
don't know if how many of you adults remember what you were like in seventh grade, but uh, I don't think I could have done what these kids have done today in seventh grade. I, it's just amazing. Were you not just astounded with their sophistication? Thank you so much for coming out to join us today, and I'm wondering if there are any final motions or points of order to be made from the floor of Afghanistan. Afghanistan motions to adjourn the session until next year. <laughs> It was a great year. We do look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, parents for supporting your kids.